pale pestilence and plague of a palomino veil draped forth and forth with leaning towers glued to the verdant halls left unbound by any one being stood bereft of aridity as the globules to fire in unstable trails and a balsam with scented high and true bellowing deep the flowered grave which sighted the gnome. There were mossy stones, dotting antediluvian rails, flying buttresses, weak divine luck contortions, and piney festers, while needle curtains of evergreen shade closed the blinds to marred floors jutting far and out a great mausoleum. Amidst the pillars which hoisted set levels aloft, lay bare a very disarray of stones, peeled off of anonymous sources, scattered unintentionally throughout the depreciated tiles. Out of the necropolis center, mosey the old man, a lavish burgundy book in hand, whistling and whistling, under fierce constitutions of pine and needlewim entanglements. Another fork, Another split, another laugh, another stick, a bow, a weed, a root, another hollow stamped by boot. Reaching a midpoint, the man met with an old friend, an abiotic comrade, his dearest chair, its tightly sewn leather of a muddled brown hue wrapping snugly around, revealed glints of occasional bolts of gold and rusted copper. A boy of adolescence watched his sitting down upon the throne and the unfolding of something crimson. He walked to him. You look funny, he said openly. Right, I do. He turned a curious page as the book turned a curious man. My viewable humor is based on a reason to trade. To get this face to smile tellingly at the luminosity of others' cheeks hoisted high, he waited and a laugh of his own throat to the through, and he said, but never witty for the purpose of being witty. I don't understand. He coolly eyed him. Well, read, my boy. You will learn. May I read that? He pointed bluntly, and the man gazed at his book-bearing hands. No, I am sorry, but I am reading this now. You may read something else. I want to read that one. You may read the covers. But the boy was important. But there's nothing on the covers. Nothing's even labeled. Then read the binding. This veneered spinal column and the subtle mastery of it all. It's turned upon its tacit engineering so that you may one day make your own book. The boy could not argue with this. For one day, he may just want to build his own book. He inferred and soon noted the man's trickery. The backbone's hidden workings, masked behind the spine itself. He should very much like to dash up and climb some book, to tear out the pages in a prearranged chaos, and earn the art of the spine. But for now, he wanted to read of a different knack, to read of words and worlds built of once upon a time. And they all lived happily until their deaths. To be saddened of fins and heels and miss of the ever so coveted concept of sequel. And to be inspired over all to construct something commendable with synonymous significance and even the impossible surpassing of said consequence. The Plains of Teladrius by Nikolai Ivan. He murmured. The boy's eyes lifted slightly. He whispered, His name is never firm. It varies with the tongue. He's most commonly named Nicholas Eden. He flipped shriveled leaves. His anecdote's far too grand a one. Are you to read his? His is a Bible, I'm afraid. Cursed Pepperdises and the broken tautologies of the Ivan scriptures, they've gone and blown his tail out of proportion. He studied his gaze and missed the lines. I am no evilist. May I read that? Good heavens, you've only just asked me that. The binding, I can't read the binding. 
Not your tongue. It may be, but I don't know. It's hidden behind itself. Well, be it then. Read the floor. The entablatures. I don't care. Just leave me to my read. Is that his tale? Does it look like a holy book to you? Gravely a holy book. You rip at the tome in his hands, wild eyes peering at you. There's a possibility. I may never know. The man pursed his lips. Fine manner, good call. Sadly, no. This tale is merely of revelation to him. You talk funny, too. Reasserting his attention, he adjusted his sitting position, all the while holding a dull gaze on the boy. Right, I do. 